All right, so first things first, um, <clears throat> whenever you're building an engine, you wanna make sure that everything's very clean, obviously. So the first thing that we are gonna do is we are going to clean, break clean the uh, back side of the block, like where the bearing is gonna sit. Some people put oil on the other side of this. Everyone that I have ever known that builds engines says that's a no-no. I've seen people do it and they say that it works. I don't do it because everyone ever, has ever, always told me not to. So um, I keep behind the bearings as clean and as dry as possible. In these bearings I'm trying to see if it says it on the bearing because sometimes it does but the way that LS's work and just about every single engine I'm not gonna say every single engine because there might be some weird one that I don't know about that doesn't do this but the bearing with the hole in it goes to the block because that's the hole that the oil comes out of to lubricate your crankshaft now there may be some weird engine where the oil comes through the main cap and that's why I'm not saying every engine is that way but 99% of engines are that way so you're gonna put the bearing, or the, well, I need to wipe the back side of this bearing. I almost forgot to do that. <clears throat> so you're gonna wanna clean the back side of the bearing. Brake clean. These are already pretty clean, but it's always good to clean them. Again, you're gonna put every single bearing in. Just like that. Now some bearings will say on the back side of the bearing, upper and lower or two block or two main cap. Uh, these do not. Um, they do say standard on them because it's a standard size bearing, but uh, that's one way you can tell. Now, after I put this last one in, I'll explain what we're gonna do with the middle because it's a little bit different. Not much, but a little bit. So the middle of an LS, the middle of main saddle or main cap, whatever you want to call it, is uh, the thrust in the engine. The thrust is, in any engine, is what controls the forward and backward play of the crank. So that's what these two bearings that are off by themselves are. They're the thrust bearings. Now every engine is going to have a thrust bearing. Um, where it is located on the block can be different for different engines and the LS is in the middle, but the thrust bearing, you can identify it by how it's got a, a side like ridge to it. That's what the thrust of the crankshaft rides on. These are just, you know, a little thin piece, but that's what your thrust bearing looks like. And if you look on the block and almost every block, this is how it is. There's actually like a ridge for that to sit up against. That's how you can tell where the thrust is in a block, like a small block Chevy, like an old gen one. It's in the very back back here. And you'll see that same ridge on a gen one small, uh, small block. I don't know that I've ever seen an engine with the thrust in the front, but I'm sure you could put thrust in the front. There might be some that do have the thrust in the front. Usually it's in the middle or the back from ones that I've seen, but really it could be anywhere on there. There's nowhere that it would have to be. Let's see, there's no particular direction to this that I can tell either. Let's see, front. What I am gonna do, since it doesn't say front or back and these look identical either direction you put them, the, all of the numbers and writing were on this side of all these bearings, so I'm gonna match the numbers and writing up on this bearing as well, just so that it kinda makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. But know that that probably wasn't 100% necessary. Now that's a little strange that it's not sitting all the way. 
No, okay, it's just because I haven't pushed it hard enough, but when the main caps go in, it'll sit all the way down. Now, if you notice, too, so this might scare some people, there's no little tabs or tangs on the uh, bearings in the center. And a lot of people think that that's what keeps the bearing from spinning in the block. That's actually not true. What keeps the bearing from spinning in the block is the actual clamping force of the main cap. So some engines don't even have these at all in any of them. Um, but you can see where the, I guess, factory bearings would have them because there's a place in the block for it. But not every bearing uh, company puts them in their bearings. Okay, so now what we're going to do is set these other bearings. They're for the main caps off to the side. And we are going to grab the crank or grab the lubricant. We're going to put lube on all the bearings and set the crank in here after we walk, clean the crank off. He said that this crankshaft was actually in really, really good shape, like measurement wise. Mm -hmm. It uh, had almost no wear on it. Heck yeah. Which is, he said, is a little strange because of the fact that the. Uh, bores had so much wear on them, you know, that's why we had to bore the block. Yeah. But he said that, you know, that he would take it. It's not a bad, uh, not necessarily a bad thing. And what I'm doing right here is blowing out all the holes in the crankshaft just to ensure that it's clean. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let the crankshaft dry before I put it in the block. Now, if you put it in the block wet like this, what we would probably do is wash off all the assembly lubricant and you'd be putting it together dry, which would most likely mess things up when you first start the engine up. Um, and I'm going to let it air dry a bit in some of this bigger stuff. Um, just because I think that's the best way to do it. Personally, I don't really have a good reason to tell you why. That's just how I think you should do it. Counterweight, so I'll go ahead and wipe off. It's gonna take forever to dry. We'll let that dry. We'll set it in the engine. While we're letting that dry, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the main caps and put the bearings in those. Get right behind you. It's in the shape of a fingerprint because that's where someone touched it and it corroded on the on the like from the oils and stuff in your skin. Huh. It doesn't hurt anything or affect it. set this in you want to try to be careful and not touch anything but the area that the crankshaft is supposed to sit in so you don't hurt anything and then once you get it in this far just want to make sure that it's going to spin which it does so now we'll take our main cap so I went ahead and put the bearings in the main cap and we will put a little bit of lube on them just like we did the other bearings and just set them on there. Four, two, three, four. 
And one helpful thing when you're taking apart engines, uh, you know, a lot of times you can't really put it together the right, the wrong way and it actually work. But just to make it easier and quicker, that like we, when we took this apart, I have a little hash mark on the main cap and that's the side the hash mark on is also the one that goes forward. Or the side that goes forward. So we just know without having to sit here and guess. And on an LS, it is a little bit harder to mess up the directions because I won't really explain it exactly why. It's just the way that they're designed. It's almost impossible to put it together backwards on the main caps. Because if you do put it in backwards, the holes on the sides won't actually line up. That's when you'll get far enough that you'll be like, dang, I did it wrong, but you can't actually completely put the engine together. Now I'm gonna clean my hand up. We'll start dropping the bolts in. Probably gonna tap a couple of these main caps down just a little bit. And I'm not tapping them all the way. Until they bottom out. Just getting them in there a little bit so that they're definitely aligned so that when I put the screws in it's not like a big pain in the butt. So right now I'm just running them down to uh, so they are touching the main cap. And then I'm gonna just torque it on just a little, little bit. Is this bigger? I guess they are bigger. <laughs> All right.
there. Let's see what that works out to in foot pounds. He's guessing like 50, so we'll start there. At least 50, maybe a little more. Okay, so it's about 50. So that's what we're going to go with on the rest of them. On the inside ones, at least. And it's on the outside bolts, how many degrees? 50. 50 degrees? Okay, so I'm gonna go like... <clears throat> oh, I guess we'll do the same foot pounds then, okay. It's almost like Ricky's built with this before or something. Mm -hmm. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go around and make sure I didn't like this one or something. They're all tight. Then we gotta make sure the crankshaft still will spin. And then that means all that we did is good. And then put the side bolts in. Alright, see if the crankshaft still spins. Oh yeah, it spins good too. Very good sign. Alright, so now we'll put the side bolts in. Make sure it spins after that. 